Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Olisi, the son of Nube, is my name and I'm back uh, on this broadcast. Um, I hope you all enjoyed your weekend and you started the week off well. Um, now, I, I, I want us to discuss a bit about the happenings on, uh, the goings on rather in Zimbabwe. You will know that late last week, that was on Friday to be specific, Zimbabwe introduced uh, a new currency which is called the Zimbabwe Gold, ZIG, uh, in short. And there is a lot uh, that has been said about the currency by both uh, the opposition and members of the public alike. The government itself has also said a number of things about the currency. So there are a few things that people have wanted to know or that people have been distorting uh, about the currency. For starters, some were told or some believed that the new money is going to start circulating today, that is Monday, uh, the 8th of April, when actually what is happening is that the government will start introducing the first bet uh, of this money, of these notes, uh, on the 30th of April, which means that uh, for now the, the, the systems are busy trying to convert uh, the new currency or the Zim dollar that was in existence, you know, the Zim dollar that was hit hard by inflation, uh, which surpassed 50% uh, last month, that is March, uh, into the new currency, which began, or when it was launched, was pegged at 1 US dollar to $13.56 in Zig, or 1 US dollar to 13 Zig, 56, um, which the government is uh, claiming uh, is now the strongest currency uh, in Africa or in Southern Africa. So the, you will remember also that last year the country issued what was said to be gold-backed digital tokens uh, in the ZIG currency as well. And it then allowed them to be used as official means of payment for local transactions. So this is uh, the foundation on which the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe then launched the new ZIG currency. Uh, so the original tokens are now being renamed the gold backed digital tokens, which is GBDT. So the Reserve Bank has issued around 917 kilograms worth of this GBDT, uh, worth around $69 million. Now, the ZIG currency is going to be or we are told the reason why it's called the Zimbabwean gold is that it is going to be pegged by uh, on the or let me say pegged on the price of the gold bullion uh, internationally but that's not in uh, the, 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 the whole of it because it is only going to be partly pegged uh, by gold then the other part is pegged we are told by the foreign currency reserves and the government claims that uh, it has uh, more than a hundred million dollars in foreign currency and worth of uh, 185 million dollars in gold. So this is what is going to back the, the ZIG as we are told. So it's going to be backed partly by gold or, and then the other part in foreign currency reserves. So the gold is said to be amounting uh, to $185 million, while the reserves, we are told, are at $100 million. But you know that when it comes to our government, you can never entirely trust uh, the rhetoric that they give. So then uh, there has been a halabaloo as to how this uh, currency is going to be maintained valuable, considering the fact that we have had several other currencies that were introduced amid pomp and fanfare with so many promises by the government that this one is going to last, this one is going to be the best, this one is going to do this or that. And at the end of the day, they have all gone the same direction. 
They have all failed. That is why now we are on the seek. From the Pierre's checks, there were travelers checks before. Then we had the Zim dollar. We had whatever. Bond note. We had RTGS. Plenty of them. And all have proved to be bad currency. Trying to chase the good. And at the end of the day, the bad currency has lost out. And it has been completely annihilated and remains now uh, a ghost. So, at the end of the day, uh, we had the opposition, especially we had the Triple C, and not the Triple C, we had Advocate Nelson Chamisa, rather, uh, saying that the money, the new money is also going to fail. And he gave, uh, as his reason, the fact that Zimbabwe has a political problem, which he calls a legitimate, a legitimate crisis. He says the money is going to fail because uh, there were stolen elections. Zappu followed that up. They also parroted the same uh, message that for as long as uh, the elections were stolen, then the currency is going to fail. And this is what I want to mainly talk about because we are seemingly uh, conflating politics with economics. A currency doesn't fail because there were disputed elections. A currency doesn't fail because there are people who are saying that elections were stolen. A currency fails because of basic economics. A currency and an economy are tied together. And while politics may have a, a bearing on that like we have in Zimbabwe, it cannot be the politics of stolen elections, but the politics of how to do things, the politics of the economy. And this is what I want to talk about. Uh, the Zimbabwean currency fails not because ZANU-PF steals elections. The Zimbabwean currency fails because the whole economy is crumbling, and that is because ZANU-PF lacks ideas on how to build an economy, on how to sustain the value of the economy, the value of the currency, because of their quasi-fiscal policies, because of policy inconsistencies, because of the clandestine deals that politicians cut with those who circumnavigate the economic processes in the country. Uh, you talk about uh, the looting of the country's resources. You talk about um, the underhand deals that politicians do with black market traders, especially uh, those trading in foreign currencies. What they are going to do right now, which is what they've always done in the past, is to undermine the very process which must keep the Zimbabwean currency working. In the same manner that they've undermined the very processes which must keep the economy going. So, far from stolen elections, far from this so-called legitimacy crisis, the reason why Zimbabwean economy fails and why the Zimbabwean currency always fails is because those who are supposed to safeguard it are working against it. While they are busy preparing to launch this ZIG on the 30th of April, somebody is already busy using the information that they have about the currency to work against it. They are already, you may find that foreign currency traders who are being controlled by politicians and government officials are already in possession of this currency. And they are busy using it to buy. Uh, they will be using it, or they already started using it to buy U.S. dollars. While you are busy chasing this Z with your foreign currency, they will be shopping for that foreign, foreign currency that you have using this same Z. So, at the end of the day, you will be stuck with this Zig, which they are going to print. They are also going to print a lot uh, of uh, and then reserving it for themselves while you are busy chasing the Zig. And at the end of the day, this 
uncontrolled printing of the money uh, will be uh, the downfall of the city, as it has always been the downfall of every other currency. So among the measures that the government must put in place to make sure that the ZIG works is to make sure that the policy on foreign currency is maintained. Uh, they must implement robust uh, economic reforms and adhere to fiscal discipline. Uh, they must be transparent and accountable in their governance. Uh, they must implement effective monetary policies to control inflation and invest in infrastructure and human capital development, uh, which in a way that fosters a conducive business environment to attract foreign investment. Uh, and they must diversify the Zimbabwean economy beyond just gold and promoting exports to earn foreign currency. So at the end of the day, the main reason, as I have said, that our currency fails is because there is especially a lack of political will on the part of ZANU-PF officials to make sure that all the laws at, that are meant to control the economy are adhered to and arrest those within the party and government who make sure that they work against or who try to cut corners by involving themselves in illicit trade, especially in foreign currencies. You have right now uh, the government in its statutes saying that Zimbabweans must not be trading in foreign currencies. They must use the Zimbabwean dollar. And that whoever has foreign currencies must take it to the banks for exchange. But right now the banks have no money. And yet we have people bragging on social media, even showing in optics that they have four million dollars in U.S. currency in their homes. This is the money that was, must also be used to back uh, these reserves at the same bank. But people have it in their vaults at home. And these are ZANU-PF officials who are seen with the president, not only an ordinary ZANU-PF president, people that are seen with the president, they brag about this. Nothing happens to them. That is because the president himself is taking a lackadaisical approach towards resolving Zimbabwe's economic issues. So these things have got nothing to do with stolen elections, but everything to do with basic economics on the part of government, basic administrative issues uh, in as far as the economy is concerned. So government must take uh, charge and is not taking charge right now because people based on their political standing have this impunity of doing whatever they please with the economy, whatever they please with the currency. And these people who have these huge sums of US dollars are not even exporters. They are people who go to the black market to buy and sell. They are traders in the foreign currency black market, which the government must be stemming. And their government officials, some of them are close friends with the first family, some of them are close friends with powerful ZANU-PF people. So these guys are using these currencies to enrich themselves. They don't care about the country, they only care about themselves. So this is the main reason why, why we are where we are. Uh, as proof that uh, they can be bad politics, yet the economy is working. You have your examples, uh, Kenel Muama Gaddafi of Libya. He was accused far and wide of being a dictator, of being intolerant of opposing views, of uh, killing opponents, and a, a host of other things. But at the end of the day, the way the Libyan economy was structured under him, because he knew national planning, he knew how to run an economy, he knew how to make national resources work for the rest of the populace, other than just himself. Of course, he enriched himself in the process, he enriched his family in the process, but he also had something for the Libyans. There was never a time when Libyans were seen trying to cross the world or traveling to other countries in sake of a better life because 
Gaddafi knew how to administer an economy, he knew how to plan an economy, and you he knew how to exploit national resources for the benefit of Libyans, not only those surviving, but also those uh, who would be chained onto the country in the near future. Look at uh, Paul Kagame in Rwanda. The politics of Rwanda is very dirty. They kill people. They kill political opponents. But at the end of the day, the way their economy is structured is in such a way that the country is progressing. Rwanda is one of the countries that are progressing very well uh, in the whole world, not only in Africa, because uh, Paul Kagame knows how to plan an economy and how to execute those plans. Look at Russia under Vladimir Putin. Look at China under Xi Jinping. Uh, she knows how to run an economy, how to plan an economy. Yet their politics is dead, is considered one of the worst dictators in the world. Yet their economy is now the strongest economy in the whole world. It is the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing economies in the whole world. Look at Ethiopia. Their politics is bad, but economically, they've been growing faster than even China. So at the end of the day, it's not entirely about the politics. It's entirely about the willpower of those that are in political charge and their economic acumen. So, while we all must converge on the thought that ZANU-PF needs to go, it must be based on their failure to run the economy. And their failure to run the economy must be kept economic. Let us not drag the elections, let us not drag everything else just because we want to benefit from that. No. When we speak matters economic, let us keep them at issues economic. So, thank you very much uh, for listening in. Send your views via the comment section underneath this video. But don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.